Hi, my name is Pina Anchetta. For the past seven years, I've worked as an all-source intelligence analyst for the Air Force. During this time, I've used data to drive my analysis and really grew to love what it's capable of, specifically the insights you can gain and the stories you can tell with it. As I transitioned out of the active duty, I wanted to continue working with data and doing analysis, so I researched coding boot camps and loved what savvy coders had to offer. For my capstone project, I was determined to find out who the most valuable players in the NBA are. Every year, the NBA awards a player the most valuable player trophy, and every year, around the same time, analysts debate what makes a player valuable, whether that be through wins, most points scored, most assists, etc. I wanted to find the answer to this question using the traditional, traditional measurement of value. How much am I getting for how much I'm paying? To determine who the most valuable players really are. To do this, I use 538's most recent algorithm called Raptor, a robust algorithm using player tracking and on-off rating, which uses a player's shot selection, assists, rebounding, defense, and more to determine a player's on-court value. It is the most holistic measurement available, which also makes it the most pertinent for this study. I measured a player's Raptor against their salary to determine how much on-court production teams are getting per dollar to ultimately determine who the most valuable players are. This process involves scraping data from ESPN's website using Python, merging and doing calculations with 538's data in SQL, and visualizing it in Tableau. I will now share my screen. Starting off, the general question I wanted to answer was, who are the most valuable players in the NBA with an emphasis on the word value and its literal definition? So before going into my findings, it's important to understand a few definitions that helped guide my research. The first is value, which Webster defines as a fair return in goods, services, or money for something exchanged. In this instance, it is a player's output as measured by Raptor and more, uh, which I'll get into, exchange for the salary they received. Next is Raptor, which stands for robust algorithm using player tracking and on-off ratings. This is 538's most advanced statistic that takes advantage of player tracking it reflects how modern NBA teams actually evaluate players. The actual equation isn't publicly available and isn't, necess isn't necessarily important for this study. Finally, we have WAR, which stands for wins above replacement. WAR measures how many additional wins a player is worth over a replacement level player. In layman's terms, how much better are you than the average player? Ultimately, these three definitions were the crux of my capstone. Now I'll be moving on to some code. The first thing that I needed to do was gather my first data set, which consisted of salaries from 2014 onward. I chose the year 2014 because that was the year player tracking was introduced and thus so was Raptor. The data I got was from the ESPN website. First, I imported pandas and requests. Uh, I had trouble executing the code every time. Um, there would be an error saying I didn't import a module that I did. So I found a solution, which is to load and auto reload, uh, which reloads all the modules every time before executing the code. First, I created a variable called the URL and number and assigned it to the link to the US or to the ESPN website. Then I created a new variable that would store the request function, getting the URL. Finally, the last variable used the read HTML function to read the website. I did this for each page of the website and ultimately concatenated them into one variable so that I could export it as a CSV file. I did the same thing every year and then started my work in SQL. In SQL, I imported the salary data set I got from ESPN through Python, as well as the WAR and Raptor data sets from 538. The WAR and Raptor data sets were a lot easier to get because they were downloadable from the 538 website. I wanted to organize the relevant data from both data sets into one table, so I created new tables for each year by drawing on the players' names, including their team, minutes, salary, the percentage, percentage of their salary they take up, uh, total Raptor, and more. In this new table, I first divide the salary by 1 million so that the number could be easier to use for my value calculations. Then I added a new column called Warpter, which added War and Raptor to give me one single number that determined how, much, how productive a player was on court. Finally, I added another column called Value in which I divided the Warptor by the new salary to give me a number that is indicative of how much on-court production a team is getting for their money. Moving on to the results, starting with 2022. Uh, at the top, we have the top five most valuable players in our new metric, 
As you can see on the right, I filtered the data to only include players who have played at least 1,800 minutes uh, because that is the fewest amount of minutes a real-life MVP played. Moving towards the middle, I wanted the dashboard to be as easy to read as possible, so I included pictures of, the, of my, my MVP on the top uh, as well as the real MVP on the bottom. The text box gives a short description of the player as well as some easy counting stats so that you can compare the players. The number next to their pictures indicates their ranking on my value chart. Uh, as you can see, Desmond Bain of the Memphis Grizzlies is number one, making $2 million while having a warp tour of 13.3, which gives him a value score of 6.54. The real MVP, Nikola Jokic, is ranked 46th. Uh, he made $31 million and had a warp tour of 38.5, uh, which gives a value score of 1.21. Finally, at the bottom, I included the least valuable player according to my research. Uh, this number is also filtered by minutes, so this indicates the least valuable player who has played a lot of minutes. In 2022, it was Ayo DeSunmo of the Chicago Bulls who made $900,000, uh, had a warp tour of negative 4.5, giving him a, score, a value score of negative 4.8. The rest of the slides follow the same format. Uh, in 2021, my MVP was Nicholas Batum of the LA Clippers, while the real MVP was, again, Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets, who this time ranked 50th on my list. Batum made $1.6 million with a warp tour of 11, which gives him a value of 6.7. Jokic made $29 million with a warp tour of 26.7, giving him a value of 0 0.9. The least valuable player was Dwayne Bacon of the Orlando Magic, who made $1.6 million and had a value of negative 3.8. In 2020, in 2020 uh, the most valuable player was Goran Dragic of the Miami Heat, who made $460,000, had a warp tour of 6.6 .6 and a value of 14, while the real MVP was Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks, who ranked 59th made $39 million and had a warp tour of 21.9, which gave him the value of 0 0.5. Uh, the least valuable player was Carmel Anthony of the Portland Trailblazers, who made $1.6 million and had a value of negative 3.5. In 2019, the most valuable player was Pascal Siakam of the Milwaukee, excuse me, the of the Toronto Raptors, who made $1.5 million had a warp tour of 11.9 and a value of 7.7. .7. The real MVP was Giannis again, who ranked 67th this time, made 24 million, had a warp tour of 21.1 and a value of 0 0.8. The least valuable player was Colin Sexton of the Cleveland Cavaliers, who made $4 million and had a value of negative 3.8. In 2018, the most valuable player was Nikola Jokic, who we've seen win two actual MVP awards and who was on his rookie deal. So he made $1.47 million this year. He had a war tour of 15.8, giving him a value of 10.7. Uh, the real MVP was James Harden of the Houston Rockets, who made $31 million, had a war tour of 31. So his value was one. Uh, the least valuable player was Dennis Smith Jr. of the Dallas Mavericks, who made $3.2 million and had a value of negative 2.6. In 2017, the most valuable player was Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz, who made $2.1 million, uh, a warp tour of 20.6, and a value of 9.7. The real MVP was Russell Westbrook of the Oklahoma City Thunder, who had a warp tour of 22.1 and made $26.5 million, giving him a value of 0 0.8. The least valuable player was Julius Randle of the LA Lakers, who made $3.2 million and had a value of negative 1.7. In 2016, the most valuable player was Joe Johnson of the Miami Heat, who made $200,000, had a warp tour of 2.6, and had a value of 9.9. .9. The real MVP was Stephen Curry, who had the highest warp tour of 39.2 and made $11 million, giving him a value of 3.4. The least valuable player uh, was Hollis Thompson of the Philadelphia 76ers, who made $900,000 and had a value of negative 6.1. In 2015, we had a pair of Warriors teammates uh, winning the fake and real MVPs. Draymond Green was my most valuable player, making $900,000 and having a warp tour of 24.6, uh, which gave him the value of 26.8. In 
His teammate, Stephen Curry, made $10 million and had a warp tour of 36.1, giving him a value of 3.3. The least valuable player this year was Zach Levine of the Minnesota Timberwolves, who made $2 million and had a value of negative 6. Finally, in 2014, Isaiah Thomas was the most valuable play player, making $800,000 and having a warp tour of 12.4, giving, giving him a value of 14. The real MVP was Kevin Durant, who made $17 million and had a warp tour of 26.5, giving, giving him a value of 1.4. The least valuable player this year was Tim Hardaway Jr., who made $1 million and had a value of negative 6.9. In conclusion, uh, here are some lessons I've learned from this study. Uh, the most valuable players in the literal sense uh, were either early career or late career players, with no players in their prime um, of their careers, uh, which is from years five through 11. This is probably because of players overperforming their rookie contracts or good players on their last legs, overperforming contracts they received in the last years of their careers. You know, now, of course, just because these players are valuable doesn't mean general managers should construct their teams with only young and old players um, on cheap deals. A good team would have a few players in their primes, making most of the salary cap, uh, with good rookies and veterans filling out the edges. After all, uh, the average salary of the most valuable players was only $1.25 million. He is to never overpay for bad players. You know, finally, just some tidbits for future arguments for all the sports fans. Uh, the most deserving MVP was Steph Curry in 2016, who in real life was actually voted the first unanimous MVP ever. So the stats check out. The least deserving was Russell Westbrook in 2017, which was one of the most highly debated MVPs in recent history. Um, so the stats check out again. Now, as for a few personal closing thoughts, uh, I thought this capstone was a very fruitful experience. Uh, throughout the whole process, I used agile methodologies to keep myself organized and on track. Uh, this included the use of JIRA to create sprints that held myself accountable so that I did not leave anything for the last minute. And I'll definitely continue to use Agile for all work in the future. One thing that I'm particularly proud of was learning how to web scrape. Coming into the course, I figured this would be one of the most daunting uh, parts of the process. As someone who didn't, who does not come from a coding background, you know, it struck me as some, something really arduous. I tried a few different methods that didn't work for me at first, but eventually found a solution that was perfect for what I was trying to accomplish. I learned that finding solutions is part of the process and it's important to know what you don't know and how to fix it. Um, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching.